Hi there, Sam Moser here. Thanks for tuning in to the third part of my van build series. In this video, we'll take a detailed look at the van I purchased and the cleanup work it needed at the start of the build, since it was used and fairly banged up from its previous life as a delivery van. Let's go. When I got the van, it already had this mess of spray foam everywhere from the previous owner's effort to insulate it, as he said it was getting hot back there when doing deliveries in the Texas heat. What they did was put up a reflective insulation, Reflectix, over the large sections of the wall and ceiling. Then they covered this with spray foam. They also filled many of the columns and other nooks and crannies with spray foam. I pulled down all of these pieces of Reflectix for two reasons. The first is that this isn't an effective way of installing a radiant barrier. For a radiant barrier to do what it's supposed to, there has to be an air gap on one side of it. In this case, one side was adhesive directly to the sheet metal, and the other was covered with spray foam. This means you won't get the benefit of the radiant properties of the material, and instead, heat will just conduct its way on through. Now there would be some resistance to thermal conductivity here as Reflectix with no air gap does have an R value of about R1. But that's pretty poor, and the spray foam covering on the Reflectix was pretty thin in most spots, so I chose to redo it with my own insulation. The second reason I wanted to pull it down was to check behind it. I was concerned that there may have been space behind it where condensation could form and lead to mold or other issues. I ended up seeing no signs of this though. The Reflectix had been taped around the edges with foil tape, and this, combined with the spray foam on top, seemed to seal it off pretty well. Beyond this, the columns and nooks and crannies had also been filled with spray foam. And this does help. Spray foam isn't a material I would choose to use. Many people do use it, and it can be effective, especially for filling in hard to reach spots, as was done in many areas here. If you do this though, there is one thing you need to be careful of. When filling in confined spaces, if you aren't careful, it can dent and deform the sheet metal as the foam expands, which in turn can affect some of the structural integrity of the body. There were no signs that this had occurred in my van, but it's something to look for. If I was starting from a new van, I wouldn't choose to use spray foam. I would instead pick a different installation I could stuff into all the small spaces. When I got to the step of doing my own insulation, I used 3M Thinsulate but I'll talk about all the different insulation options and why I chose Thinsulate in one of the next videos. Insulating vans can be a fairly complex topic and there are lots of other considerations such as thermal bridges that I haven't touched on here. Next, there were some other bits and pieces to remove. I removed a plastic covering that runs down the side wall covering the vehicle's wiring harness. This cover is excessively bulky and I'll tuck the actual wires away behind my wall paneling. It's pretty annoying that Ford didn't just route this through the wall cavity. I also removed the dome lights in the cargo area, and I took these out early so that they wouldn't drain the battery as I worked in the van. I don't need them anyway, as I'll be installing my own lighting that runs off the house battery. Lastly, the van also had a base section for a loading ramp installed, so I had to unbolt this from the floor as well. At this point, I used masking tape to mock out the layout I was planning to build and get a sense of if the scale of everything would work. But more on this later, as the topic of the next video will be planning out the layout of the build. Next, I removed the partition. It would go back in later, but for now I needed it out of the way while I worked on the floor and other bits. The floor of my van was in particularly bad shape and had a major dent just inside the step from the sliding door. I briefly thought maybe I could use a jack and try and pop this out, but this was a no-go. Instead, I'll just correct this by adding in wooden supports to level the floor here when I build the subfloor. Somewhere along the way, I found that water was leaking in from somewhere and collecting at the bottom of one of the wall cavities. You would hope this is a rare problem, but after searching around online, I discovered that many people have had similar leaks with these vans. I don't think this is specific to transits either. 
there is a common place that Ford Transit vans develop leaks, and that is at the plugs in the roof, which are used for accessing the roof rack attachment points. Ford only seals these by painting them over, and the paint can crack. It's best to add a UV resistant sealant. I use Dicor self leveling lap sealant here, and I'll put a link to that and other products I used in the build in the video's description. I didn't think these were the source of my leak though. I suspected it was in the roof seam above that section of the van. So I went a little overboard and added sealant over all of the roof seams. I don't think this was necessary, and it turned out this wasn't the source of the leak either because water was still getting in the wall cavity even after doing this. It didn't hurt anything though. I later found that the source of the leak was a small crack in the seal of the joint just above the top right corner of the driver's side door. I sealed this up with some lap sealant as well, and that stopped the leak. Another place where water can leak in is at the clip-in points of the plastic molding that runs along exterior sides of the van. Transits, Promasters, and Sprinters all have a similar design here. In my case, one of these panels was a little bent and had some broken clips towards one end. I pulled this panel off, replaced the clips, and then added some extra sealant around the holes. I was gonna do this for all of the panels, but then opted not to remove all of them as that requires moving other sections of trim plus some plastic bumper pieces. I find it difficult to get these unclipped without breaking some of the clips, so I was worried I'd do more damage than good. And I'm not sure how likely it is for water to actually enter through these, but it is something that I came across in my research, so I thought I'd comment on it here. Now it was time to work on the inside. I discovered that there was some pretty nasty gunk buildup under the floor of the cab area in my van. I think the previous owners possibly let water enter into this area a few times, maybe while trying to spray out the back of the van. Not sure, but I didn't notice how gross it was under here until much after buying the van when I was getting the jack out from under the passenger seat where it's stored. So I opted to disassemble and remove the front seats and their bases so I could clean under this area as best as possible. The passenger seat was pretty easy to do, but the driver's seat is a little more difficult as this is where the van's starter battery is housed. In the end, I was very happy that I took the time to do this just to have the peace of mind that the area is clean and not a place with trapped moisture for more mold to grow. While doing this, I also noticed some rust spots in the footsteps under the plastic covers, so I treated these with some rust reformer and paint before reassembling. At this point, I was really feeling like, dang, it would have been nice to have bought a new van without these issues. For anyone out there looking at used vans though, keep in mind that everyone treats vans differently, so not all will be this dirty. And hopefully this gives you more ideas on where to look when inspecting a used vehicle before purchase. Now I could work on the floor in the back. So the floor was pretty banged up. It was dirty, the paint was super scratched up, and it was dented. The dents would be accounted for when I built the subfloor. So for now, it was only time to address the first two. After cleaning the dirt off with some simple green and a brush, I decided it would be best to repaint the floor. The main reason for this was rust prevention. I would be building my own flooring over this floor, but I don't want rust to be able to easily develop on the metal under that. Having so much exposed metal where the paint was scraped away would greatly increase the chances of that happening. Before painting the floor, I first stripped it down some by going over the whole thing with a wire brush attachment on a drill. This was slow and dusty work. After this, I applied paint and primer. I used Rust-Oleum Clean Metal Primer and then white enamel paint. I'll link to the paints I used in the video description as well. And that was about it for the cleanup phase. The next build step was installing the subfloor and flooring but the next video will actually be about planning the layout because I believe this is one of the most important steps in planning a van build. It's also important to do this early on since the layout affects so much of the build. For instance, one thing that it affects is the placement of any exterior additions on the van, such as adding windows and roof vents. Adding these is easiest to do early on in the build before you have insulation or anything else in the way. So that's some insight on what will be coming up in the next videos. Thanks again for watching this one, and I hope to see you next time. Please subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for the next one. Thanks.